Perhaps you've heard of Rupert time and time again. Maybe you know him and are already his friend. Or maybe somehow you've missed all of his tales. You've missed his fun and lessons and all of the details. I will tell you Rupert is a rabbit. He's furry, brown, and young. And sometimes, no matter what he's learned, it seems his lessons have just begun. Come along with Rupert and, as he learns about the wheel of the year. And excuse me if I giggle <laughs> when I ask you to lend me your ear. <laughs> Although Beltane's not where most people would probably choose to start. That's exactly where Rupert showed up in my dreams and in my heart. Then again, perhaps that's exactly the very place to begin. What Rupert learns is that love is the best place to start. Let's listen in. Beltane is a very special time of year meant to celebrate passion and love so that people will remember to take the time to make their lives below as it is above. The people you see here dancing around their May Eve fire, they are celebrating their own very human and very sacred desire. From shaking hands to caressing a child's sleeping face, touching each other is a natural thing to do among the human race. This and more is what our furry friend learns in a very special place from she who has many names and from he who has green leaves for his face. In the books and in the pages, Rupert goes on to learn about the longest day. In his second tale, he learns about a, chain, a color changing fairy along the way. Today is the longest day of the year, she said, when the sun takes a very long time to lay down his head. It's time, the fairy told him, for a change of the seasons, though it will be a while before you feel the reasons. That's the nature of nature. There isn't anything wrong. The days will grow shorter and the nights will grow long. You may believe me when I tell you he would rather the weather stayed hot. The fairy reminded him the days would turn cold, whether he liked it or not. Our furry friend isn't always happy to learn things along the way, but learn things, yes he does, and sometimes in the most marvelous of ways. At Lamas, he hid near a tree to listen to a crone that was wise who answered the children's questions about the whens and the wheres and the whys. Lamas is a time for many things, she began. You can celebrate however you want. Oh, yes, you can. There are those who remember the sun king named Lu. His power begins to weaken now, just like it's supposed to. After the solstice of the summer has passed us by, his presence and warmth slowly fades from the sky. And so some are sad at this time each year, thinking of the cold to come. Some shed their tears. There are those, too, who remember the days filled with the sun, with laughter and love and long days of fun. So no matter if you cry or laugh, whatever you choose to do, remember there are many who honor the god named Lou. At the end of her tale, she sent the children away, and they are alone. You'll have to read the story, though, to know what he's given by the crone. The last of our stories of the Four Sabbaths, which are covered in Book One, is about Mabon and how Rupert helps M Melvin get his harvest all done. The weather starts to cool and many plants turn to brown from green. It's not the beginning of the year or its end, but somewhere in between. People use this day to welcome the beginning of the end of the year and to praise the Lord and Lady for all the blessings they hold dear. Melvin the Mouse is sometimes very bossy and sometimes very wise. Seldom does Rupert meet his this friend without ending up with a surprise. This last tale is no exception to the rule for Rupert and his small friend, for even though Rupert has a choice to make, he's happy in the end. So we have come to the end of the book, but no worry, have no fear. We have four more tales to read as we go on through the Wheel of the Year. Four more. Samhain is up next, where Rupert meets a little girl. Becky is her name. She recently lost her grandmother, so her world will never be the same. He hadn't seen the little girl come from behind. He hadn't heard her make a noise of any kind. She was suddenly right beside him, just right there, as if she had appeared, poof, from right out of thin air. She had reached out and drawn him into her small arms, and somehow he knew she didn't mean him any harm. She had hair that was dark yellow like some wheat he'd once seen, and she was wearing a ribbon on her wrist that was green. She had pressed her small nose into the fur of his ears, and then it had begun, the quiet snuffles and tears. Then Rupert watched a woman come walking through the trees. 
and thought just for a moment perhaps he should flee. She was somewhere between short and tall, as people go, wearing a long skirt and had a silver toe and had a silver ring on one toe. She looked at the girl and said, We've been looking for you. Come join us in circle and bring your little friend too. And so Rupert learned a lot this time about people and their tears. He also learned about the special time on the wheel of the year. Our second tale, this time around, is about the year's longest night. The second tale in the first book was about the longest day. That's right. Rupert smiled to himself, leaning closer and stretching out one long year. He was eager to learn more about the Sabbath and the wheel of the year. One, the bright star, one boy called out, all the way at the very top of the tree. Mistletoe, said Emily with a green scarf, where my daddy kisses me. The garland and yule log, and remember the wreath too. These were all things that to Rupert were quite strange and new. We'll start with the star, said Stacy, way at the top of the tree. Do any of you know what it is? Can anyone tell me? Why, yes. Yes, they could. These children had learned a lot that night, and Rupert did too. There are eight stories about the Sabbaths in these two books waiting for you. At Imbolc, which comes next, Rupert meets a new friend with bright sparkly wings. The fairy invites him to learn about milk and brooms and all kinds of other things. For people, my friend, Imbolc can be so many different things, the fairy said twisting and turning and fluttering his wings. Halfway between Yule and Ostar, winter is on its way out. But still, the dark time of year and cold, there isn't any doubt. Imbolc reminds us that spring is coming before very long and gives us the chance to raise our voices in chant and in song. Rupert even learns how some awaken the spirits of spring by making lots of noise using pots and pans of all things. And then at long last, we come to the last story found in Book two, here God and Goddess have a surprise in store for Rupert, and for you too. The sun was high, spring had sprung, and it was a beautiful day. The Lord and Lady were with him where he always hoped to stay. But there was a sound that came from over the last hill, one that made his heart stop and gave him a happy thrill. He could hear the distant drums calling, come one, come all. But that's not what he was doing, oh no, not at all. No, that's not what he was doing. Instead, he was following his heart. And that, Rupert would tell you, is the very best place to start. Yes, in these tales and stories, you'll find Rupert has a lot to learn. So come on along with us as the wheel of the year makes its turns. So I've said all I'm going to say. I've, said, I've done what I've set out to do. Perhaps we'll see you soon at a Rupert's Tales and Tunes performance near you. See you soon.